Lord, somebody lift up your hands and worship Him now. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. We give you glory, Jesus. Oh, we give you glory, Jesus.
power of sin. The power of sin is Jesus. Lead
prophet shared something with us. He says, Hallelujah says it all. All that is within you. He says, bless the Lord O oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And sometimes you realize that you are lost for words. You don't have enough words you know, to ascribe unto him. What you you know, the kind of emotions that you have within. But your Hallelujah your hallelujah. hallelujah your hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord i said praise the lord revelations 1 he says i am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore amen and he didn't stop there he says and i have the keys of hell and death Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. On behalf of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, 
Yes. And Reverend Dr. David Entry, who is the general overseer of this Caris Commission. I welcome all of you to this Good Friday service. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has a package for you. You see, his death was not in vain. It came with, with a package. And guess what? Your name, he knows your name. And your name is on that package. And so today you will not live here the same. I said you will not live here the same. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your life will be impacted. I said your life will be impacted. We've been praying and seeking the face of the Lord in this upper room experience for 82 days. And guess what? Your life will never remain the same. Will never remain the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, before we welcome one another into the service, now, if you have a testimony during this upper room experience period, okay? Now, go to the back of the auditorium. The pastors will be there to, so that your testimony will be taken in an appropriate time. You have the opportunity to share your testimony. Don't sit on that testimony. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Now, we want to welcome each other. We want, to, we, want to, we want to let every single person in this auditorium feel at home. Okay. Everybody, Everybody must feel at home today and be expectant of what God is about to do. Go around and welcome somebody, right? Salvation and glory, honor and power to the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let's please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Wow! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord will do somebody good today. I said the Lord will do somebody good today. Sit down, relax, and be expectant. Please, let's take the first bi the Bible readings, please. Amen. This reading is taken from John chapter 19, verses 30 to 37. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit.
Therefore, because it was the preparation day, the body should not rem- that the body should not remain in the, on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might ta- be taken away. Then the soldier came and broke the legs of the first and then the, of the other, who was crucified with him. But when but when they came to Jesus and saw that he had already died, he was already dead. And when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not pierce his side with a spear. And immediately they pierced his side with a spear. And immediately blood and water came out. And he who was he who had and he who was seen had testified, and his testimony is true, that he knows that he is telling the truth, so that so that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, and again, another scripture says, they shall look on him who was pierced. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Many of us have watched the Passion of Christ and have cried. But the depiction of Christ's suffering in this movie didn't even get close to the real thing. Now, when we read our Bible, we realize that it didn't capture all the gruesome realities of the cross. Why? If it details the greatest gospels, it will tell you that there was no sympathy, that we were gripped, we were gripped with sympathy for Christ. And sympathy is not the path you need for salvation. It is faith in the death of Christ that brings you to the salvation. Luke 24, 26. For ought not the Christ to suffer? And only 20 verses later, Jesus says it again. And thus it is written that Christ should suffer. If your question is as to why, the answer can be found in the way that he died. 9 a.m. They pierced his hands. And in the sixth hour, Darkness came over the land. Yes, darkness came over the land for three hours straight. And till this date, no man has had the power to have darkness and have darkness come over this land. Jesus, the only man who can impact the cosmic atmosphere. The cross didn't kill him. It was the absence of God's presence that broke his heart. When his presence withdrew, God's wrath was unleashed against Christ. This was the punishment that no one could ever suffer. So 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who was without sin become sin for us, that we may be righteousness inside Christ. Justified, yet you're sinking. Once a wretch, but now saved. Your works couldn't help you, but his works is what changed the game. Into your hands I commit my spirit was one of the last things he said before he died. The customary practice of Jewish boys and girls before they sleep. That is what they said. Yes, that is what they said. And Christ, he ever lives to make intercession for us because it is impossible that he could be held by death. The one who hanged on a cross didn't belong to the cross. So what was he doing there? He was there for you. Zechariah 13, 6, I was wounded because of the people I loved. Blood had to flow for the sin of man to be forgiven. According to God's law, all things are purged by blood. Without the shedding of blood, there, is no, there will be no remission of sins. The piercings of Jesus Christ is evidence of this bloodshed. To put to bed the things that were separating God from man. The veil tore when Jesus died. The flesh was crucified so that God can now freely build his church. The same God who formed the body in Mary's womb is the same God who will form our glorified bodies. Amen. Amen. The way of the cross is suffering and Christ suffered for our sake.
The Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from every sin. So we are so grateful for the blood of Jesus. Amen. Is anybody grateful? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we're grateful. Thank you for the love you shed. And I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. But sin separated. The path was way too wide. But from the far side of the castle, you brought me by your side. So you, you made a way across the great divide. You left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. So there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed. You broke the chains, saved my soul for the first time. I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, for it washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, who have saved my For I have been by the blood of the Lamb.
Hallelujah. This Bible reading will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, and chapter 2, verses 1 to 2. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have the old one back. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Are, are you tired? No. So, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
It is testimony time. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. As you keep clapping for the testifiers, I see that you'll be up next for a glorious testimony. Hallelujah. Can we have the testifiers come up very quickly? Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Lord of Caris has done it again. Pastor Frank. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you are excited about a testimony or you are excited about somebody else who is coming up. Hallelujah. Please, let's hear your testimony. Reverend Frank, last year, our brother was working in a particular job, mm. which he was doing 83 hours a week. Are there jobs like that? Me. Wow. Now, 83 hours per week. Yes, uh, please. Now, this job was, causing, was affecting his church work. Obviously. And one of the brothers told him... <laughs> One of the brothers said to him, you are losing your fire. So as soon as the brother said that to him, he said, no, I'll quit the job. So he quit the job. A week later, many doors started opening for mm. him. And he went with a specific company because what they were offering him was very enticing. However, it was a startup business. Okay. So down the line, they told him that they don't have funding. And without the funding, they can't pay his salary. So he, we, he was coming to service the end of 2023. Wow. God's servant declared job favor and business favor, and he tapped in. Okay. Now, on crossover, God's servant was telling everybody to write three prayer points. He wrote his prayer point down. I think one, two, and three was business favor. <laughs> then he also, not only did he write his prayer points down, he also sowed a hefty seed. Okay. Then the following year, 2024, his job still has not got any funding, so he has been working but not been getting paid. Wow. He continued to sow seeds consistently, believe in God. Lo and behold, this week, after being consistent with every upper room service, tapping into all of the declarations from God's servant, the funding finally came through. They backdated him from all of the days that he's been working. And today he is here to testify. What a testimony. You started 2023 eight, working 84 hours. Yes please. yes, please. And now your story has changed. Amen. Tell us the story. Thank you. I just want to give um, all the thanks to Pastor David, the wife. I'm truly I think we sound more excited than you. I'm truly beneficiary of the house. Amen. So, yes, um, I graduated a year and a half ago. I was trying to get aspirations to do my um, master's in physiotherapy. So I was trying to look for work experience, but I wasn't really getting at the time. So a sporadic job came, and it was a sales job. So I was, I was doing that was commission only, so I was working a lot harder, looking at the business point of view. But I realized I'm actually quite good at sales, so I liked it. While I was doing this, I was... So 83 hours, Yes. Please. at some point, a brother stepped in to save you. Yes, he did. Said that you are losing your fire. Yes, he said I'm and losing my fire. And what did you do? So I quit immediately. So after I quit, um, I saw that a lot of the networks that I had from the sales job, mm -hmm. some of them were reaching out to me, and I realized this can't be for me, it has to be favor. So as I was sitting down and going through them, I kind of squandered a lot of the opportunities because I, was, I wasn't applying with haste, so I didn't know which one to capitalize on. So I ended up taking um, the startup company, and they said, I like how you spoke to me, but I want you to represent my company. I sat down, I spoke to my dad about it, and I looked at the vision, and I was like, okay, cool, I actually want to be part but of it. But it was something. a startup company. Yes, precisely. But they did tell me that, um, okay, we want you to help build a traction so we can actually get the funding. But they promised it a lot earlier than expected. So January came, I wasn't seeing the funding. I'm bearing in mind I didn't have a work at the time. January 2024. Yes, please. No funding. No funding. February. February. No, no fund funding. March. No, no funding. And so when did the funding come? The funding came last week and my salary was paid this week and back paid for all of the other months that I was You actually... You did something that triggered the funding. Tell us what yes, you did. Yes, please. During crossover, um, God's servant had actually said that we should um, write three things we're believing God for and then also take faith steps by sowing seeds. And you wrote... Wrote a, a hefty... And you kept... And I kept Taking believing. faith steps. Yes, please. Sowing seeds. Yes, please. And now you stand here, yes, Easter 2024. Oh, yes. The funding has come. And your pay has been backdated to when? Back paid, back paid all the way since December. It's also been forward paid for the next coming months. And this... So the brother has a lot of money. Let's give glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Hallelujah, church. Our sister has a testimony. She was looking for 
internship opportunities, mm. but she was never successful. Until God's servant declared favors. She updated her LinkedIn accounts, and God placed a destiny helper, one alumni from her school, wow. met her and opened the door for her. Hallelujah. Amen. Nancy, tell us your testimony. Hallelujah, church. Amen. I'm grateful to God for the life of Reverend Dr. David Entry and Pastor Ovo. Hallelujah. Um, so during the fasting season, God's servant had declared um, that he sees um, people receiving favor. Mm. So I tapped in and I upgraded my LinkedIn to premium. And then I messaged a few people and a particular guy who studied the same thing as me at university. Some people are always on free. <laughs> And never the premium. Never the premium. But you took that step. Yes, please. Upgraded to premium. Yes, please. And somebody spotted you. Yes, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Um, so um, the person that I messaged, um, he went to the same uni as me, studied the same thing, went to do his master's, and also was in the role. Um, and when he responded back to me, he was receptive. He wasn't blunt. And then he wow. told me to apply for an internship that he was actually hiring for. So when I uh, messaged him beforehand, um, on the profile, it says hiring or open to work. It never ha had hiring beforehand so that was simply God um, so I he sent that on a Friday on the Monday I sent my cover letter my CV um, on Tuesday he got back to me and had said that um, I moved on to the next stage which wow. was um, an assessment center wow. the assessment center was three hours long wow. um, and it was to write an article so I wrote it and I actually generally enjoyed it um, and I sent it on the dots that was literally God um, and he got back to me and said that he's moving me on to the next stage which was an interview wow. went to the interview now um, and to be very honest I kind of fumbled at the start but mm. then I kind of redeemed myself um, and the conversation afterwards was amazing um, and then got back to me again basically gave me the internship and this is only good because I applied for internships during first year and it was so hard not unsuccessful but, but after a prophetic declaration of favor now you have an internship somebody shout destiny helper you are meeting one this week hallelujah the next testifier hallelujah church amen said, hallelujah church amen the God of Caris is at it again and the anointing on his servant is doing amazing things. Our sister here has got two amazing testimonies. The first testimony is on the 4th of, um, on 4th of March, um, he, she woke up with a pain, with a burn on her thigh. But then what happened is she slept with her iPad, and obviously it overheated and she woke up with a burn. But then she remembered wow. that she has... The anointing oil that God's servant has prayed over. Mm -hmm. So she reached out for it, anointed that area where the burn is. And within a short period of time, she saw an instant change. And as we are talking now, her skin is healed up and she's all fine. Hallelujah. Now, the second testimony is, within that same week, she was on her way coming to church. And then one of the lending guys on a bicycle grabbed the phone. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should allow her to pick up from there. <laughs> So you were, you were on your way to church. Tell us what happened. Yes, please. And then on my way to church, um, I was on the phone and someone came up behind me and grabbed it from my hand. So before I could even shout Jesus, I just shouted. The man looked at me. He threw my phone back and then he took off. So I was just... I'm just... <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's a serious testimony. So you were on your way to church on your phone, as many of you do. You were not paying attention. So a thief was riding on a bicycle, snatched your phone, and you screamed. You screamed. And he gave my phone back, and then he ran away. Wow. Nobody will take advantage of you in the name of Jesus. Let's give glory to Jesus. That's a serious testimony. Pastor Frank, on Monday, God servant declared a flavor for the night was God will meet us at the point of our needs. Amen. Our sister tapped into it. And the next day, a company that she had dealt with three years ago decided to send her a letter. What did the letter say? Hallelujah, church. I just want to take a second to thank um, God for the life of God's servant and the grace that is over the house because it's genuinely changed my life. So on Monday... Um, what did the letter say? The letter said they're going to give me a goodwill payment. They're going to do what? A goodwill payment. 
A what? Sorry. A goodwill payment. A goodwill payment. A goodwill payment. Now goodwill. give us the backstory. So on Monday, God's servant declared that if you were there, um, it's destiny and God will meet at your point of need. So one of my prayer points was finances. Mm. Um, so I was really praying hard and I was connected. Um, and then on Tuesday, so to give you backstory, I used to have a car in 2017 and I had the car, I gave the car back in 2019. Um, my mom contacted me recently and said that they'd sent a letter to her house because that was where I was living when mm-hmm. um, I had the car. So they sent a letter to the house to say that I owed them the balloon payment. Um, and I was thinking that's incorrect because I sorted it when I gave the car back. So on Tuesday, I received a letter to my address um, mm. where I live now and they don't have these details. They've never communicated with me there. Wow. And I opened the um, letter and it said um, that we're giving you a goodwill payment. But I thought they were tricking me because I thought <laughs> they were trying to say, here, um, we're going to give you money and then tell me that actually, no, you still mm-hmm. owe the money. So I was reading the letter and it said that um, they had reviewed things internally and um, when I'd reached out to them uh, back in 2019 and contacted, contacted them for support, mm-hmm. they felt that they could have done more to support me, so they okay. wanted to give me a goodwill payment. Wow. So I thought it was going to be like £25, £50, and I would take it, same yeah. way. Um, but I was reading the letter and they have given me £400 wow. that I was not expecting. Out of the blue. Out of the blue. Somebody shout favor. God will meet you at the point of your need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Reverend Frank. The grace in the house is working. Our sister had an interview for, at a law firm for work experience that would allow her to do a vacation scheme at the end. Unfortunately, she wasn't successful. But they liked her, so they offered her another work experience, but it wouldn't allow her to do the vacation scheme at the end. Mm-hmm. So she came to service. She tapped into every declaration that God's servant um, said. He said, um, divine acceleration. And on that same day, he also led the whole church to be anointed. Mm -hmm. So she anointed herself and she tapped in. She then went and sowed a seed. Now, pick up the story from there. Yes, please. Um, So after the anointing, you sowed a seed. Yes. And tell us what happened. So after um, going to that service, God's servant was preaching about divine authorization. and Divine what, sorry? Authorization. Divine authorization. And so he was just saying that there's certain like places you're trying to get to, but in the spirit, because you don't have the authority, you can't actually get there, so the doors remain shut. And so in that service, we anointed ourselves with anointed oil, and God's servant said, um, expect to receive testimony. Hallelujah. And so days later, the internship the work experience that I applied for that they told me that sorry you've been rejected basically um they told me that a space has been freed and we want to um choose you to be on the work experience so after the anointing and the declaration and the seed days later the same people who rejected you said a space have become available come and step in so now you have stepped into that phase by the prophetic word that will be your story as well let's give glory to jesus amen pastor frank we are indeed having an upper room experience mantles and communion are working miracles our brother here um during the upper room meetings um on one occasion he came and god seven asked people to pray over their mantles so he prayed over the mantle and then after a while, one of her colleagues was not feeling well. So she's been in out of hospital. But this occasion, he decided to go and visit her. So when he went, um, he prayed for, for her, laid a mantle on, on her, and asked her, what do you want? And she said, I want to be discharged. Now, I think you went on a Monday. So let, her, let him pick up from there. Um, but so the so you've, you, you are now at, in the hospital or yeah. wherever yeah. with your colleague. You've laid the mantle on him or her. Yeah. Is it him or her? It was her. Her. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, um, so I'm not sure why people are excited. But so you laid the mantle on her and you asked her, what do you want? Yeah. What did she say? Um, <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> no. Please, please allow him to share the testimony. By the grace of God. Please. Um, I had the mantle on my hand. I yes. planned to give it to someone else. I sort of hold my hand and I'll pray for you. And then when so I you asked her to hold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. <laughs> <laughs> so she held your hand. Yeah. And you prayed for her. Yeah. 
um, just to shed a bit of light on the story, um, this particular colleague, she's, she had been missing for like five months. Wow. From work? Had, from work, yeah, because um, we work in a creative environment. She's mm -hmm. a photographer. So she's been missing for a long time. So when I was able to get through to us, because we're worried, mm -hmm. uh, where have you been? She said that she had to travel because she had a very major, major skin issue that okay. was, she was told that it can only be treated in another country. So she okay. had to stay there for a period of time. Okay. So after it cleared up, she came back, mm -hmm. obviously just finding out what's going on and how things are going. Um, I told her, next time it happens, I'm going to pray for you. And mm. You're going to come to church. Wow. So we said, amen. Um, a week later, funny enough, she messaged me saying that it's happened again. I mm. need you to come and pray for me. Wow. And she said that it's gotten to the point that it was a lot worse. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> um, it's gotten to the point that it was a lot worse now than it ever was before, before wow. she got the treatment. So wow. she wasn't sure what to do. She said she's going to go to A&E. And I said, mm. okay, I'll meet you at the A&E. Okay. We'll pray and then we'll go. So when I got to the A&E, I couldn't recognize her because she was dressed up like a ninja. Like I wow. So wow. when she came to me, I, I, I didn't know who it was. Wow. Because the, the situation was that severe. That's so I severe. said to her, do you know what? Long story short, what do you want? What do you want to happen? She's mm. like, I want to be discharged today. I don't want to have to stay in hospital. Mm. And I want the skin issue to clear up. Mm. Um, a couple of days after, yeah. The specialist told her they were gonna keep her. Then they told her, you know what? You could go home. And then after being told to go home, like at least three or four days later, the whole situation had cleared up. I seen what? Yeah, it was the gone. skin. Yeah, yeah, it was all gone. Wow. So, so. And this is a condition she had to go outside the country yeah, for. Yeah. And the most. And by your prayer, and the mantle. Amen. <laughs> My God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I want I, I had the mantle that God said that we should pray on and mm -hmm. I wanted to give it to a particular person but I thought if I give it to her now, she's already discharged I don't need to give it to her then the, on the Monday I had another friend um, he travelled but he had to get rushed back to London because he had an, effect, an infection and he's got sickle cell wow. so it was he, I think they even operated on him so me and another brother that knows him he does come to the church every now and then we always tell him to come but you mm -hmm. know some people they, it's a bit interesting so we decided to go, so I thought, you know what, maybe I have to release this mantle this time. So we went to the hospital. Um, he was not in the best state, and um, by the grace of God, the, the service before we had taken Holy, we take, we had yes, taken holy Communion. communion yeah. And I found a communion on the floor and I put it in my pocket. Okay. <laughs> so you took an extra communion yeah. to, it wasn't to by, your friend? It wasn't by proxy. Yes. Yeah, I found it. Yes. And then I pocketed it by yes. the grace of God. And I, I got home, I was going to use it for myself, but I didn't know where it went to. So when we got to the hospital, when I, I was just tapping part of okay, So like, what did you do with that communion? So what we did with communion, we prayed with him. We mm -hmm. uh, got him to take communion. Um, that mantle, me and the other brother that's here, we poured oil on it and gave it to him and prayed for him. And, but I, I, had, I had faith. So there was a time that 13 years ago, I was very... What unwell. happened after you yes. took the communion and you prayed after for him? After he took the communion, uh, we prayed for him. And I believed God that, you know what? I asked him again, what do you want? Like... I told him, do you know what? I don't care what you want. The same thing that God servant. And he responded. Yeah, and he responded. What did he say you want? He wanted? said that I want to be discharged and he wants to travel again to the place that he was meant to And go what to. happened? Um, by Friday, he, he messaged me and said that he was healed. He's totally fine. That he's now traveling back to the original place. That so, <laughs> by the anointing in this house and by the mantle, yes, you have healed two people. Amen. Oh, let's give glory to Jesus. Wow. You know, God's servant said many of us will be going around. People who are sick, conditions that defy logic, just step in and deal with the situation. And that's what our brother has done. Let's give glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Our brother has an amazing testimony. His second contract was three days. He wanted full time and a pay rise. He sold seed and he's here to testify. Yes. So um, I started um, a part time role that was for three days in the week. Um, at that point, it was with a startup company. So at the beginning, it was fine. But then after a while, I realized that I definitely need more money. Right. So, <laughs> So I contacted my manager and I asked if I could be put on to more days and have more money. Mm -hmm. um, but she said that I clearly didn't read the contract because, <laughs> because it's, they're a startup business so they don't have a lot of money, etc. Sure. 
So I was thinking, what did I sign? <laughs> but then from there anyway, um, I was believing God. And then I kept on sowing seeds into God's servant's life. But as I was sowing them within that season, it wasn't, it wasn't related to the job. If I'm honest, I thought at the time, I didn't really think of it again. I thought, mm. oh, I need to find another job. Sure. But then um, they, I had a meeting with my manager on the Thursday or so. And then I think I sowed a seed. And then I had another meeting on Friday. So I was, it was too frequent. So I didn't know what it was so about. So this is the same manager who said manager. you hadn't read the contract. Exactly. And it was after a few months. But mm. the season that I sowed the seed in, mm. um, she contacted me the next day. And I didn't know what it was about. And then she started to speak about um, that they want to open up their budget. Okay. And I remember when I sowed the seed, I sowed it and I didn't have it. it, it yeah, it, was, it really hurt me when I sowed this. <laughs> And wow. I sold it. But then one of the words that God's servant said to me when, when he prayed was, you will never lack. Amen. And I remember that well. So at that moment in time, the next day I had the meeting, and um, she told me that they had opened up the budget, and they want to put me on for full time okay. and give me a huge bonus as well. Wow. So when I added everything together, my, the, the salary I'm on is exactly double to what I was actually on before. Wow. The prophetic word has delivered for our brother, and I believe it will deliver for you as well. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Our third Bible reading will be taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 to 10. Then it reads, Who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form, he had no form nor comeliness. And when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was, dis, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with the stripes we are healed. All, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb. To the slaughter, and a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich. In his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody grateful for the blood? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful. We are grateful. Can anybody testify that the blood of Jesus still works? Has the blood of Jesus healed somebody? Has the blood of Jesus saved and redeemed somebody? Somebody declare the blood still works. Blood still still works. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're grateful for your blood. Oh, we're so thankful, Jesus, that 
that the blood still works. Oh, we're grateful, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Great is the Lord and his mighty great power. Oh, he died on the cross just for me.
The Caris Church app is finally here and houses everything you need in one place. You can watch and listen to messages, view upcoming events, receive upcoming church updates in your notifications, give and connect with us. The way we listen to messages has had a makeover. Simply click on the message icon and click the Create Playlist icon to create your own playlist. You can also view the daily Bible readings and access the daily prayers on the go. Search Caris Church in the App Store or Play Store to download the app and start enjoying the benefits. Thank you for watching. And so, when and all these things to obtain the crown, it, it it will entail some some level of work, perseverance, and suffering. And so, as anything you want to do for God, it will put a demand on you. It's called sacrifice. It's called what? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifice to help build the church. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifice to help strengthen believers. Sacrifice to support and sacrifice to serve faithfully in that church, in that department. Sacrifice. 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 It's, it, sacrifice entails suffering, but it is worth it. That suffering will, crown, will give you the crown. Sacrifice, my brother. Sacrifice. Most of us will only sacrifice for our interests. Sacrifice for the things that we want that will embellish our lives on earth. It might not be bad in itself. Look at the way you sacrifice for your education. You sacrifice for your children. You sacrifice for your business. You sacrifice for your job. You will sacrifice for everything. But when it comes to God, there are people who claim they love God, but your level of sacrifice is zero. It's wanting. It's questionable. Your level of sacrifice, your level of sacrifice for God's people, for God's work, and for the church. Repent, my brother believer, my sister believer. Yeah. 
To earth, choose all the way from the earth to the cross. My death to death, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name. You took for the last time. You came, you came, you came from heaven. Show the world, show. Somebody give Jesus praise in the house. Give Jesus praise in the house. Shout a living hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you go to two people and tell them that Jesus paid it all? Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Come on, go to two people, just somebody. Tell them Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Just for me. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Just for me. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Just for me. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Just for me. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Just for me. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Just for me. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Just for me. Jesus paid it all. Just for me. Thank you for the cross. Amen. Lift up your two hands and we want to pray that God visit us, O Lord. Visit us, O Lord. Visit us, O Lord. Let your presence be mighty upon us. Visit us, O Lord. Visit us, O Lord. Where is Judy? Visit us, O Lord. Visit us, O Lord. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, visit us, O Lord with your glory and with your power visit us O oh Lord with the blessings of redemption visit us O oh Lord Father we thank you in Jesus mighty name Amen Amen why don't you clap your hands for me? Amen. Someone shout glory. Shout glory. There is a, every meeting, in every meeting, the most important aspect of every Christian gathering is the presence of God. Amen. The presence of the Spirit. And the presence of the Spirit can have dimensions of expression wow. based on some factors. Chiefest of all those factors is the agenda of God. And so, and then the hunger of the people and sacrifices behind the gathering. A few factors. So, the most important aspect of our gathering is the presence of God. Now, other determinants of the gathering besides the presence of God is who is present. So, it's a separate unto me. If Barnabas and Saul were not there, he wouldn't say that statement. So, 
that manifestation was a function, was based on the presence of certain people he wanted for an assignment. And he was the one who organized and he was the mastermind behind their showing up. And when they were there, he said, separate. Peter was not there. That's why we never had separate unto be Peter. It was Paul and Barnabas who was there. Okay, then there's an assignment I have for Paul and Barnabas with the others, but this time it's Paul and Barnabas. So the manifestation of the glory that showed up had also to do with to uh, to do with who was present. And so the presence of God in a gathering is so important. That determines the, the nature of the gathering. Secondly, the manifestation of the presence also has to do with who is present. Who is present? And I'm so happy that you are present. God will not send a message to people it's not the, who the message is not relevant to. So he sent an angel from heaven in Luke chapter 1 to Nazareth, to a city called, to a city called Nazareth, to a, 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 a virgin called Mary. It, it was specific. God sends messengers. In fact, he says that the message we got sent to Israel, Acts chapter 10, verse 36. The message God sent to Israel, which was preached. So it, God always sends a, a message to a people, the message has the people in mind. And why am I saying all these things? Every gathering attracts a unique presence. Because of one particular person who is there. Do you, do you understand that? So your coming has added a certain presence. A dimension of God because you are you are a gem. You are you are significant in what God is doing. That's why you are alive. So your presence adds a dimension of this glorious God. Yesterday we were in a service and there was a majestic presence of Jesus, our Lord, who showed up here. And his expression of him supernaturally, which we, we, we I, I picked up, was all of us together, every one of us, form an expression of him. So that means that whoever is here plays a role in what, even if he's an unbeliever, if he's a thief, if he's a devil who shows up here, God's presence factors that the presence of that devil. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so every gathering has a unique expression of the, 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 the divine presence, which I call it a flavor. It's a flavor. I, I sense there's a flavor of victory. There's a flavor of victory wherever all everybody is. Those who have gathered in uh, it's different viewing centers. I'm telling you, there's a flavor of victory that God is lavishing upon our gathering. Oh, I see heaven visiting somebody in an unusual way. If you are the one I'm talking about, let your amen show me. Stand still. Exodus chapter 14, 13 and 14. Stand still and see the salvation. And our word is victory. The salvation. Stand still and see the salvation which the Lord or of the Lord, which he will show you. It is God's salvation which he's bringing. Thanks be to God who always gives us the victory. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. God himself. So 
God gives victory. God is our victory. And this special day, I sense a God-giving victory coming to somebody. When you go for an interview and you do well and you get the job, it's you went and you said that you went, you got the job. But when your friend or your cousin or somebody has that vacancy and they said, don't come, um, or your former manager, it tends to happen a lot. I see somebody's former manager about to do that for you. Yeah. Goes to a better place and with a better role and there's a bigger role and say you are the one i want to work for so you don't need an interview i'm going to make sure you you get it you get in there not because of how well you did in an interview you got in there because someone handed it to you i'm telling you not every victory you have to fight to get there are some victories that are donated there are some victories that are credited there are some victories that are given i stand here as a prophet and i'm telling you I see God giving you the victory. I see God giving you the victory. I see heaven giving you the victory. I see it manifesting in your life. Sarah said, the Lord has made me to laugh. Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you this day. God is giving you victory. God is giving you victory. God is giving somebody victory. I sense a flavor of victory upon this assembly. Oh, wherever you are watching, wherever you are sitting, wherever, whether in this auditorium, whether in the overflow, whether at the viewing centers, or whether in your living room, as you watch, I sense God giving you victory. And if you believe it, shout a living amen. Well, put your hands together. Let's give Jesus praise. He said, thanks be to God, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Thanks be to God who causes us to try, or who gives us, who gives us the victory through Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. When we know he's given us the victory, the only uh, the role we play is to give him thanks. Give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Give him thanks. In other words, this kind of thanks is not only limited to the victories we've had in the past. Because it didn't say that God who gave, he said who gives. I like the King James, or New King James said, who gives. So he has done it and he's about to do it. There are other ones coming you haven't seen. And for that one, we have to give God thanks. Come on, someone, give Jesus thanks. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a believing hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, it's nice to see everybody on this wonderful Easter Friday. And it happens also, to, <coughs> excuse me, it also happens to be our day 82 of our daily self prayer services. Day number 82. And every day 
every day practically is about three hours of service. Sometimes there's the temptation to go more. But practically every day averagely three hours of service. And so you are talking about three hours for 80 days. That gives you 240 hours. 200. It just seems like the upper room, they were there for 10 days. They didn't leave. So 10 days, 24 times 10, uh, 240 hours. So, yeah, some of you can understand it. Don't worry. Yeah. It's just. So after the 240 hours, the other six hours, which is the two days, one. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just an addition, you know. That, but after 240, they waited for 240 hours, and Bible said suddenly. But look at what is interesting. What is interesting is in the verse one says that, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the day of Pentecost was given to the people by God. He told them. That they, they, God told them, you celebrate this day every year. So it's a yearly event on divine calendar. Given to his people that every year this must happen. And so they prayed and waited. And when the day came, something broke loose. An annual celebration given by God. They kept praying till that day came. Okay, some people didn't get it. Today is Easter Friday, which traditionally from the Jewish calendar is supposed to be Passover. 3 p.m., the lambs were slaughtered. The lambs were slaughtered 3 p.m. on the day of Passover, and that was the same day Jesus died 3 p.m. Because he was the Lamb of God. Slaughtered. And so when the day of Easter was fully come. <laughs> you understand that? We've been praying and praying for 240 hours. And it's it's just now after 240 hours, we were waiting for the day of Easter. So I am convinced. But you know when the, when the day of Pentecost came, I, I, I have this. The Bible, <clears throat> excuse me, the Bible talks about how um, in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, they went to the upper room and he mentioned the disciples. And then Peter assembled with the 11 and they had to appoint a 12 person. So it looks like just a few disciples who gathered. I'm not sure whether all the one, 500 people who have seen Jesus came or it started with just them and then by the time of the day of Pentecost, they've increased to 120. So that supposes that not everybody was there from the beginning. But everybody who was there on the day of Pentecost, verse 3, verse 3 said that clothing tongues as of fire sat on each. Uh, it was not so much about who was there from the beginning. It was very much about who connected on the day, the day, the day. Oh, and I announce to you that this is the day. To, to This afternoon is the day of divine visitation. Divine visitation on somebody's life. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter whether you have been part of it from the beginning or not. If you are connecting this evening or this afternoon, I announce to you that the day is coming upon you. The visitation is coming upon you. If you believe it, shout yes. Shout yes. Hallelujah. Somebody is being visited. Well, please be seated. We have some of our brothers also in some of the viewing centers joining us and I want to recognize and acknowledge all those other brethren who are who are at the viewing centers joining us 
and not in any particular order. Not all of them are ready to show up on video, but um, they are at the various locations and we want to... Can I have the list, please? We want to acknowledge them and where we are. I think we have in... Okay, I have it here. Nottingham. Nottingham, they have gathered and they are... They are in Nottingham. Please let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. And I can see others are in Bristol as well. The Bristolian, the Bristolians are there. Bristol, can I hear you shout? Bristol, are you excited in Bristol? Bristol, okay, they can't hear me. They seem not to be able to hear hear me. Bristol. And then we also have Redding gathering, the Redding, the Red people in Redding. <laughs> God bless you. And then we have ha, the Red people can now hear me. <laughs> okay, the Bristol people we say is not fair because Bri- 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 Bristol, did you hear? Did you hear me? You are just clapping, okay. (laughs) Aha! How about Nottingham? Did not that Nottingham might hear? Nottingham. Yeah, it's frozen. It is. And then we have Birmingham as well. Birmingham, can Birmingham hear me? Okay. <laughs> uh, the Lord bless you, Birmingham. And we have Birmingham KP2. Birmingham KP2 as well. Can they hear us? Birmingham KP2. And then we have Coventry. Coventry. I, I believe Coventarians are very excited. <laughs> there seems to be a is it delay, latency, or something like that. And then Northampton. Northampton, they, I'm sure they'll hear it later, and then they will also know that we have mentioned them. Hallelujah. They are going there. It's traveling. It's, it's, it's very soon. It's traveling to get to them. And then the Nottingham guide. Aha, Northampton. <laughs> and then we have the Chatham, Chathamites. Chatamites, they will also hear very soon. The sound is traveling. It's a sound from heaven. <laughs> it's traveling. They will also hear. So we have Chatamites as well joining us. God bless you. Chatham, this one, it looks frozen because the people are not moving at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm sure when they hear us, um, we will know about it. Praise the Lord. But, and then we have people in the overflow am I right so, uh, quite a few a lot of people in the overflow those in the overflow can you give us a shout once they open the door I'm sure we can hear you um, can, can the overflow guys hear us <laughs> hallelujah let's clap for those in the overflow amen and they are still shouting. God bless you. Yeah, keep the shouting going. <laughs> and then, um, different people with families. Hey, chat up. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, I didn't know you are not seeing what I'm seeing. <laughs> the chatamites are, chatamites are wild. They want to fix their camera so we can. Okay, chat up.
That's Kesta. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we want to welcome all those who are also joining us in their homes, in your cars, around the world. Uh, you didn't, uh, we don't have uh, Sierra Leoneans joining us. Salon. Hallelujah. You should, next time, get your video as well so we can recognize them too. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really, really want to show, if you're happy and you know, shout amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We bless your name. So we bless your name. Jesus. 
I want to read from Revelation chapter 1. And I read the verse 7. Behold, he comes with clouds. And every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Amen. Let's pray, Father. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. So as we get into your word, let your glory be on display. The glory of the cross. The glory of your wisdom. The glory of your purpose and plan. Let it be on display as we get into your word. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the things you have to know about God is that he, because he's a righteous God, he has to punish every evil doing. A righteous God cannot overlook sin. So he will, God will punish every act of sin. He will. He has to. Because he's righteous. Because he's just. Because he's pure. He has to punish every act of sin. And Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says that, Don't be deceived, God is no more. For whatsoever a man sows, so shall he reap. So, Everything you do before you you came to Christ and after you came to Christ must be accounted for so long as the righteous demands of God are concerned. So it's as I thought some time ago, it looked as if God was weak. God was not righteous enough because when you look at the Old Testament, the way he should punish sin was not done. Abraham shouldn't have died without his lies about his wife being settled in the, in the records of God's righteousness. It's like Abraham shouldn't have died without his going off to have Ishmael with his servant. It being dealt with by the justice and the mercies of God. Because God never chose Ishmael. That means that God was not in it. Jacob lied to his father to get a blessing. And it seems like he went scot free. Many people, Solomon, Solomon. And when we were reading the book of Kings, the things we saw about how some of these kings were wicked. And some of them got away with it. It seems like God didn't do anything. What kind of God is this? Seems to be a weak God or is not righteous enough. Look at David, the best of all the kings. He had certain issues that he went into his grave with, which seemed like God didn't really deal with. So in the Old Testament, as I taught some time ago, it looked like God was a weak God. He didn't have the backbone to deal with sin the way it should be dealt with. And yet, he's supposed to be righteous. Not, it wasn't because he was weak, but it was because he deferred the punishment to a particular season. So the cross was the junction where future punishments and past punishments were all punished, were all executed by God on the cross. That's why the cross, Paul said, when I came to you, I did not seek to know anything amongst you, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2, except Christ 
and him crucified. First Corinthians chapter 1. It says that, verse 18. It says that we, for the mess, the message of the cross is foolishness. But it's foolishness to a category of people. How do you know who is going to hell? When the message of the cross is foolishness to them. Oh, this nonsense. I don't like this. How can I? I'm too intelligent for this. You know, I'm, I'm very academic. I'm too intelligent for this. How can you tell me someone died on a cross and it, it cleanses my sin? I'm too intelligent for I'm too. I know you are intelligent, and yet you didn't, you even thought your, your daughter was a virgin. <laughs> You're so intelligent, you didn't realize that. There was mess in your family. Where is that intelligence? Bible says that to those who are perishing, how do you know a person who is perishing? When the cross, the message, not the, it's, it's a message. It's now, it's, the cross is not happening now. So those who are wearing dark dresses and going to the cemetery, no, it's not. We are wasting your time. The cross is a message now. It's. And one interesting thing about the cross is that when the cross was happening, the people who were there didn't even know what was happening. The Pontius Pilate who uh, sanctioned his execution didn't know the meaning of what he was doing. He didn't know it. Even the disciples, they wouldn't have been crying. They didn't know. And the people who were passing, those who said, crucify him, crucify him, they didn't know the significance of the crucifixion. Mary was crying at the cross. Why? Because she didn't know the significance of the crucifixion. They, they didn't know. The, the centurion, he said, indeed, this is a son of God. He said it, but he didn't even know. He thought, because Jesus was not the only one to die on the cross. That was the Roman style of execution. It, it was, it's believed by historians that in the time of Jesus Christ, over 30,000 people were executed on the cross by the Romans. So Jesus' cross was not like a special cross to the Romans. It was one of their crosses. So if, if you are wearing the cross and you are not in Christ, you probably was, is, were wearing one of their crosses. <laughs> I know you have a cross hanging in your car. But you are not in Christ. It's probably one of the crosses. One of the 30,000 crosses. It only becomes the cross that takes away curse when you believe the message of the cross. The cross has a message. It's not just a cross. It has a message. And it is the message of the cross that saves. It's the message of the cross that redeems. It's the message of the cross that delivers. It's the message of the cross that brings the glory of God to bear. It's a message. So you could have been there when Jesus was crucified and still be perishing. You could have, you could have been there and believed that this is a good man like the centurion. Pontius Pilate didn't want to kill him. He wanted, he washed his hands. He washed his hands. In John, in John chapter 19, he brought him to the people and he was robed in purple. And he had crown. So just was mocking him. They had a ton of crown. And if he felt, I've punished him enough. I've given him whips, scorched him, and pierced his back. So they should be happy enough. They said, no, we are not happy. We are not satisfied until we see this guy crucified. And they said, he said, take him and go and crucify him yourself. They said, no, we can't crucify him. They, they said, by our law, we can't crucify him. Because the death that saves is the death on the cross. And it was only the Romans who executed that way. So he must die a Roman death, even though he was a Jewish man. 
Even though he was a Hebrew man, he had to die a Roman death because the Bible has already said in the, in the law that curse is everyone who hung on the tree. So he can't die in the valley. He can't die through stone. He must hang on the tree that the blessing of Abraham will come upon us, the Gentiles also. So Romans had to do it. Pontius Pilate was boasting in John chapter 19. That don't you know I have the power to release you? He said, you don't. You don't. You don't have the power to release me. You have been granted the ability, the power to authorize my execution. It was granted you, but you don't have the power to release me. So you are a puppet. Just go on and do your work. In the, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, two verse 23, he says that uh, uh, him, according to the foreknowledge and the determined counsel of God, by the, the, he was delivered by the determined purpose and the foreknowledge of God. You have taken by lawless hands and crucified and put to death. What they did was lawless, but it was timely. It was lawless, but it was godly. Not their actions was godly, but the that him dying on the cross was godly. Someone say the cross. cross. So he said, uh, First Corinthians chapter one verse eighteen. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. How do you know who is going to hell? As it's there. If you are perishing, the cross doesn't make sense to you. You haven't embraced it. That means you're on your way to hell. It doesn't matter how religious you are. But to us, who are being saved, the message, not the cross, the me- it is the message, not just the cross. The message of the cross is called the gospel. The gospel stems out from the, the word gospel stems out from an Anglo-Saxon word meaning God starts from God spell. God spell, which is the God, God, and spell is story. God story. The gospel. So the, the English word gospel. Okay, it's an Anglo-Saxon word, God spell, gospel, which eventually became good news, means good news. And the, the uh, Greek word that was translated gospel is evangelion. And so they took the evangelion and they translated it as the God spell, which is now gospel, which is good news. So it's good in every sense. Do you know that if... It's announced that it's going to rain or the weather is going to get very cold again. Let's say we are going to dip to minus five degrees. Minus five degrees and the roads are going to be shut. You know that's good news for some people? That's good news for some students. (laughs) That's good news for some employees. But bad news for some employers and business owners. That's good news for people who sell coats and hot water bottle and the energy companies. It's good news. But bad news for us. So sometimes one one thing is good news here, but it's bad news there. The same thing. But as for the gospel, for the gospel is good news at all times. Good news to all men. Shout good news. That's the gospel. And the, the gospel is the message, the message of the cross. That's where the, go, the real, you can't have the gospel without the message of the cross. That is why I taught you that almost all the gospel, not almost, all the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, spent chunk of their writing on the cross. None of them missed it. Some of them they didn't even mention the, um, the, the birth. Two of them didn't mention the birth, but all the four of them were heavy, heavy handed on the gospel. On the, uh, sorry, the, the death, the burial. None of them missed the death, none of them missed the burial, and none of them missed the resurrection. Because it is the, 
it is the, the center, the center of what God can do for man. The center of what God can do. The cross. That's why it is good to celebrate the cross not only on, an, on a, a special day. Every day, our preaching must be built on the foundation of the cross. Our Christianity must be built on the foundation of the cross. Our church must be built on the foundation of the cross. You, your, the value of who you are before God is built on the foundation of the cross. Paul puts it this way. God forbid that I should boast, save in the cross of Christ my Lord. Galatians chapter, chapter, chapter 6. God forbid that I should boast because the cross is the center of anything Christianity. Now, I read, we read in uh, the readings, we saw in 1 Corinthians how it says that to those who are perishing is foolishness, the, the message of the cross or the preaching of God is foolishness, but to those who are saved is the power of God. The, ne the next verse says that, verse 19 says that, for it is written, I'll destroy the wisdom. God says, I'm not going to go with what human beings figure out. Right, so in the verse 21 said, in the wisdom of God, it pleased God that through the wisdom of God, the world, through the means of intelligence, through the means of what the world thinks that this is wise, this is good, God planned that through that means, you will, the, the world will not find God. Other than that, those who find God will be those who have more money to, to pursue the highest level of education. They will find more God more. They will know more about God. But it has pleased God that in his wisdom, in God's way of doing things, in his operating system, he has pleased God that he will not put the, the discovery of God and his plan and his wisdom and his grace and his blessing, he will not put it through in, on the path of human research. Human intellectual research. So there's no intellectual pathway to God. If you are looking for God, it doesn't start from your mind. It starts from your heart. Hallelujah. So, Paul said that to those, to the Greeks, he said the Greeks ask for wisdom. The Jews ask for sign. If you, are, if you are a prophet from God, if you are the Holy One, then do miracles like, the Moses, like Moses did miracles. Moses, when God was sending Moses, he said that take this rod by which you do signs. So God showed his presence with Moses by signs. And the Jews, says, the Jews said, if this religion is true, just show us the signs. They, only, they always ask for signs. Always ask for signs. Do this. Jesus did all the signs, but it wasn't enough for them. And they crucified Jesus not because of what, something he did. He didn't do anything criminal. That is very important to understand when it comes to the message of the cross. Yeah. I'm going to mention it in a minute, and then we wrap up. The when it comes to the message of the cross, it is not because he did something criminal. Jesus didn't do anything. He was the most perfect person who ever lived. And yet he died the wildest and the most vile death, execution. He didn't kill himself. They killed him, executed him, and they crushed him. They killed him. Dying on the cross. You see, when human beings are killing you, the punishment for the wildest offense. Some people, they do it through being isolated. They'll make you lonely, or they'll isolate you from your family, or you'll be lonely. Some also, they'll kill you by ex, uh, ex torturing your body. Some too, you, you, you will die by they, everybody will reject you. They'll make sure that you are rejected and you suffer as much as possible. Jesus Christ dying on the cross is like a combination of all that. So there's no human way of killing and that or punishing people that was not signified by the cross. Rejection, loneliness, abandon. In fact, human beings abandon him. And most, when you commit crime and people abandon you, it's human beings who have abandoned you. But Jesus is not only human beings. The earth rejected him and for the first time, heaven also said no. Why? Because of the sin of man that was on him. Heaven turned and he said, Eli, Eli. That was the, the most painful thing that he, that's what he dreaded. He wasn't afraid to die because his disciples were not better than him. They were dying singing. 
They were dying. They were. They were. They put uh, uh, um, oil and coal, or not coal, um, soot and oil on them, and and um, anything that will make things burn. They will put on them, and they lighted them like torches to light the streets. That's what they did in the Roman times. Nero killed them, but they were going to be eaten by lions and they were singing hymns and praises. Why would Jesus, their master, go into death and you'll be crying, oh, please don't, oh, please don't kill me, oh, please don't kill me. No, Jesus would not say, please don't kill me. When his disciples were say, bring it on, bring it on for his sake. Jesus is not Osama Bin Laden. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus. So when he said, if it is possible, let this cup come pass, he was not making reference to just death. He was making reference to the cup of rejection, God turning, the separation between him and God because of sin. That was what he feared. And the Bible says that the Jews asked for a sign. A, a sign. And the Greeks asked for something. Tell me something that makes sense to me. But he said that we preach Christ to the Jews, a stumbling block, to the Greeks, an offense. But, verse 23, oh my goodness. He says that, but to those of us, uh, those, those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot preach the cross without talking about Christ. And if you are going to talk about Christ appropriately, it has to be connected to the cross and the resurrection. So, as I was saying, God has always, God has always been just and pure. So a just judge must punish sin. God, he has to punish sin. He has to punish offense. He has to punish every form of wickedness. You can't escape. The police may not get catch you. <laughs> but God. And so that means all the sins that have been committed in the past, what is he going to do about it? He has to punish it. He has to punish it. But he postponed or deferred the punishment. So the punishment was still waiting. You know, Sometimes when somebody's found guilty in the, in the court, they say you come back for the sentence. He's guilty, but they say oh, he's coming back two weeks' time <laughs> for the sentence. So, so David was guilty, but God said the sentence will happen later, hundreds of years later. Even when he dies, I'll, I'll punish him. I'll punish him. It's only God who can still punish you even after you die. It's a just God. No, the police might not be able to do that. The courts cannot do that. But God, when you die, if I, that's when he can punish you better. <laughs> because that one, you are not dying again. The wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 3 makes us to understand that all have sinned. So no one can meet the standard of God. And everyone deserves punishment. Death is, watch this. Physical death is separation from people. Spiritual death is separation from God. Jesus was separated from people and was separated from God. Now, the, the core thing about the death of Christ or the message of the cross is what was, hap what was actually happening when Jesus was dying. Because when he was dying, it was actually he was going through a process because God has to punish sin and it was an accomplishment. In fact, the Bible says in this way, I, I like the, um, the American Standard Version. I believe the English Standard Version will also say it. But Ameri the New American Standard Version puts it this way. Ro um, Luke chapter 1 verse 68. He has accomplished redemption. Yeah. Redemption was an accomplishment. Visited us and has accomplished redemption. He said he has, an, he has achieved something. Christ on the cross was working. He was accomplishing. God was accomplishing something. He was accomplishing something for God. Mm -hmm. 
Redemption then comes into, into play. Watch this. This is, very, this is very important. Redemption is to buy back. So if he redeemed us, it simply means he bought us. One, bought us from where? And from whom? He bought us. All have sinned, right? And are falling short of the glory of God. And what is the wages of sin? What is the wages of sin? So that means that all must die because all have sinned. So if all have sinned, and all must die, that means you are walking around having party, but there's a death warrant on your head, a death sentence on your head. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be the the, the, the most righteous or the most religious person and the most well-behaved person, and yet there is a sentence of death on your head, including David and Moses, including Abraham and Isaac, including Jacob and Elijah, including Elisha and Zachariah, everyone, including Mary and, and Elizabeth, all of them, there was a death sentence on their head. Once you arrive, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. There is a death sentence. So as it is, because of our sins, we were slaves, slave, and, and we were on the slave market of sin. Slave market of sin. Slaves. Slave market because of our sins. So somebody had to buy us by paying in our place. That's redemption. He has to, someone has to pay because an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You can't use a goat to pay for a human being. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can, you can use a, a, a horse to pay for a hen, right? Because it's bigger. Or for maybe a goat. Because it's bigger, unless it's in matter. But okay, a cow. You can use a cow to pay for a goat. Because that's bigger. So you, you kill somebody's goat, say, no, I'll give you a cow for it. Well, that's fine then. If, if, if some, someone messes up, let's say your, your small car, maybe Ford Fiesta or something, and he said, no, don't worry. I crashed your car, but I'm going to give you um, a Tesla. <laughs> I know you like Tesla, electricity. I'm going, to give, <laughs> I'm going to give you, or I crashed your Mercedes, but I'm going to give you a Rolls Royce. What would you say? You say, oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. That's fine. I don't mind. But he crashes your Mercedes or your BMW and he says that, oh, I have some oh, oh. <laughs> Fiat Punto, Nissan Leaf. Nissan Leaf, and I'll give you. So, no. So, when the insurance are writing off your car, they have to give you a compensation payment that is at the same level or more. It might, if it's more, you don't have a problem. It doesn't matter how much you like your car. No, come on, they are giving you more. In the same way, we were on the slave market and someone has to buy us. You can't use a, a creature who is low in value and great to human nature or to human value. And so God has to find another man. But the problem is if you bring another man, the man also is also, there's a death sentence on his head. There's a death sentence on his head. So what no man can die for another man because we are all sinners and we are falling short of the glory of God. And so it takes someone who is pure, who is holy, who has never sinned, who is sinless, who is faultless to come to the slave market and he said, I'm going to buy. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. He said, you were purchased by the precious blood. Hallelujah. For you were bought. Somebody say you were bought. Let's all read your love from the screen. Let's go. You were bought as a prize. You were bought as a first Peter chapter 1 verse 19. Bible says that by the precious blood of the lamb, by the precious first Peter chapter 1 verse 19, but by the precious blood of the lamb, as of a lamb without spot, 
and without blemish. In, in, Acts, in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, which the shepherd, the shepherd, the church of God, which is purchased. So there have been some purchasing. There have been some transactions. And what he used to purchase is the blood. It's there with his own blood. So when he was going, oh, oh that's now I'm, I'm getting to the cracks of my message. When he was going to the cross, he was going to pay for sins. That's why in those days when you owe somebody and the, the bailiffs keep coming to your house and you go to court or eventually you pay everything, maybe payment plan. If you haven't paid, there's still a charge on your life. But once you pay, they give you a certificate from the court, which is tetelestai. That means paid in full. Or you can call it, it is finished. And then you post that on a tree or a notice board on your house, somewhere where everybody will see. Did you understand why he was crucified in public on the cross, where everybody will see? And he said on the cross, John chapter 19, verse 30, it is finished. Someone say it's finished. Someone say it's finished. Sit down, let me wrap, wrap this thing up. It's a message. How can you be saved when you believe in the wrong gospel? You can, you can, you can be saved. So he, buy, he, he bought us from the slave market of sin by paying the price to who? Not the devil, but to the justice of God because God has to punish sin. God has to punish sin. Someone must pay for this. But within God's system of operation, he has also designed it in such a way that if you owe me, someone can pay on your behalf and it is still legitimate. I can accept you owe me thousand pounds. He said, I don't have it. And then he, your brother comes or your friend comes. He said, I have my thousand pounds. He said, this is it. I can't say I don't want it. I want the money from him. That was the meaning of that. <laughs> What's that? It's money. It's debt. And debt can be paid by anyone yes. on somebody's behalf. Yes. So in God's system, when it comes to his, judge, his justice, anybody can pay for somebody so long as they meet the criteria. So if you want to pay, if I'm owing the bank thousand pounds and you want to pay for me, make sure you have enough money. Even if it's 900 pounds, you can't stand for me. So you must have thousand or more <laughs> to be able to pay for me. Does it make sense when he says that he was spot at a lamp without spots? It's perfect. It's, it's no sin. Does it make sense? When we read in John chapter 18, sorry, chapter 19, when verse 4 and verse 6, Pontius Pilate said, I find no fault in him. He wasn't a religious person. He was a political person. He examined him thoroughly. But he said, this is a perfect, a perfect price. A perfect, spotless, without spots. And so he, why, why would you kill an innocent man? He had to be innocent for his blood to work for us. Yeah. Well, because we are guilty. Yes. Bible says that we all have gone astray like lambs. That's what Isaiah chapter 53. We read it. Verse 7. said, for we all as lambs have gone astray. Who? 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 It says that for we all, as, uh, 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 we all like sheep have gone astray. How many of us have gone astray? All. How many? All. We all have gone astray. We astray from what? From the, 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 the judgment, of, from the law of God. From the law, to, from the righteousness. Of, we've missed it. We missed, girl, you missed it. Boy, you missed it. The righteousness of, you missed it right from the time you were a child. When mommy asks you, what is in your mouth? Yes. Nothing, nothing. You, you already missed it. You missed it before you became aware that there is a God. You missed it. We all missed it. From the day we were born, David said, in sin did my, my mother conceive me. I was shaped in iniquity. We missed it. We missed it. So all of us have missed it. And God has played. The Bible says we all have gone astray. And God, but God, Isaiah, he said we have gone, we have gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way. And the Lord has laid up, oh, ah, ah, the Lord, who did it? The Lord. Laid upon who? Him. Who is this him we are talking about? Listen, Isaiah was writing about him and yet he didn't know him. 
This was hundreds of years before Jesus arrived physically. But Isaiah spoke about his execution. Isaiah, and Isaiah gave an interpretation of the cross. Ah, Isaiah told us about what the cross was about. Even though the disciples didn't even have the proper understanding. It was after he resurrected they understood what was written in Isaiah. That is why on the day of Pentecost, when Peter was preaching in Acts chapter 2, he said that it was not possible that the grave should hold him. Then he quoted, he quoted from David. For David said, you will not leave my, my soul in hell. Neither will you leave your holy Abashadahakabasaya. Neither will you leave your holy one to see corruption. He was explaining what was said in the Old Testament. He was explaining the Old Testament coming to life in him. Oh, didn't you see how the, 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 the um, second Bible reading we, we had today, how the Bible says that they pierce him. And in the verse, John chapter 19, in the verse um, 30. 5, 36, 37, and the Bible says that, that it might be fulfilled with that which was written. Can you imagine 36, for these things were done that the scriptures might, the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his, his bones was broken. When he was on the cross, every step of the way, scripture was talking. Yes. Scripture was talking. Now, I, I need you to understand, church, body of Christ, Christians, I need you to understand that Jesus' death was not a martyrdom. It wasn't a martyrdom. They, 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 they killed a good man. It wasn't martyrdom. It was planned. God was the main one behind it. For God did not sin after John 3, 16. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it. But he sent his son that through, through him the world might be saved. In 2 Corinthians ah, chapter 5 verse 18 and verse 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse Now all things are of God. Of who? Who was the mastermind behind this thing? Who was the mastermind behind the cross? All, the, all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at the verse 19. I love verse 19. That is God. That is God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. What is the righteous God? Not imputing their trespasses into them. And have committed the word of so he was in Christ. That's beautiful thing. Can you come please say? Beautiful thing God did on the cross. He was Christ was on the cross, but God was the puppet master. He was in Christ. What was he doing? The cross. The cross, he was finally, he was now reconciling the world to it. on the cross. The cross is the point of reconciliation between God and man. By one man's obedience. Oh my God. Romans chapter 5 verse 19. By one man's disobedience, sin passed on all. And verse 19 says that, by, For us by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, the many were made righteous. So you were made righteous to be able to stand before God. Why? Because of the obedience of, the obedience of this man Christ. This man Christ came. Peter, Satan spoke to Peter, said, No, you can't go to, to the cross. See, Jesus turned to Satan, Get behind me. Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. Get behind me, you devil, Satan. Get behind me. You are trying to block the purposes of God. I'm going to the cross. Nothing can stop me from the cross. He said, for this purpose was I born. I must face the cross. That is why Isaiah says that he was led like a lamb. Look at verse 7 in Isaiah chapter 23. Ah, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. He was... Uh, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers, he was silent. Pontius Pilate said, are you not talking to me? Are you not talking to me? He never made one attempt to defend himself. Because if he had defended himself, they would all be so guilty. And you and I will still remain guilty. 
So, because, listen, I'm about to drop in a theological word. It's called, this, this is not a theological word. The first one is a normal word, which some of you, I want you to be familiar with. It's called the sin-bearing death of Christ. He bore sins. It's not martyrdom. He went to bear sins. He went on the cross in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. talks about how he gave himself as a ransom. Verse 5, he gave, himself, uh, he gave himself as a ransom for, you know what ransom is? You were a slave on the slave market of sin. Someone got to buy you. A price needs to be paid for you to be released. I saw... I saw a clip some time ago. Somebody shared it, I think, on Facebook where somebody's son has been, a rich man's son has been kidnapped. And the kidnapper said, we have your son here. He said, which of my sons? Then the boy spoke. He said, daddy, it's me. And he took the microphone, he took the uh, telephone from him. He said, we have his son, and if you don't release the money within 24 hours, we are going to kill him. He was eating. He said, oh, that's boy has been troubling me. Keep him, keep him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, keep him. Thank you very much. You can keep him, whatever you want to do. <laughs> and then he hung up. The father hung the phone. And the man called. He said, don't you understand what I'm saying? It's your son. We are about to kill him. He said, listen, you are doing me a lot of favor because I've gone through a lot of problems. Keep him. Keep him. Keep him. <laughs> Jesus, on the cross, he became our ransom. Do you know what that means? He became a scapegoat. He was innocent. We are guilty. But the punishment for our sins was laid on him. Who did that? Who did that? God. God. God crushed him for us. So the crushing of all the sins in the world that was supposed to come on each and every one of us, it was piled up by God. And the way you see huge seven tons rock, seven ton rock, being dropped on another 20 ton rock with a little rat there. <laughs> when we talk about tongue, you are talking about his tongue is, is big, big, big stone, heavy stone you can't carry. You need machine stone. And you are putting it on a, a rat. It took grind and crush the rat. The sin of the world. So when they put him on the cross, I want to show you from in Isaiah that it was God venting out his anger against sin. He has vengeance. Christ placated the wrath of God. He pl- God is righteous, so he can't stand sin. And yet we are sinners. How is he going to deal with us? How is he going to relate with us? He's angry at sin, always. God can't stand sin. And we have sinned. And he has to punish sin. And his wrath against sin was always fresh. And Christ came to absorb. Hallelujah. Jesus. Listen, that's why... He said, the cup that my father has given me, cup to absorb. It's like huge dam, huge dam. When you see dams, this is very strong to block water. Water is very powerful. To block huge dam. And suddenly the dam is crashed and the water, you are standing there, water is crashing on you. And when the water was about to crash on you, Suddenly, next to you, there was a big cup that absorbed all the water. The cup that Christ, Christ was the cup. The wrath of God, like was a dam, coming and is about to sweep you and annihilate you. The wrath of God, you can't stand it. But just when it was coming, you found yourself in Christ, and Christ, abs- oh, The songwriter said, till on the cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid, 
Here in the death of Christ, I say, till on the cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on Him was laid. Here in the death. Of Christ, I now the the punishment that we deserved was not part of it. All of it. Two things I want to make. I want to mention quickly before we finish. Look at Isaiah again. Bible says Isaiah chapter fifty three verse eight. In Isaiah chapter fifty three, the verse eight says that he was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generations? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people was, for, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he was, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in him. Yet, uh, that's the, the crux. Yet it pleased the Lord. Now, that word crash, it bruise, means it means to crash him. To bruise. He was wounded. It's God's way of crashing him. Some translation will use the word crash. Yet it NIV said, yet it was it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering. He, he will see his offering and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. Look at verse 11 and verse 12. New King James. Verse 11 and verse 12. It says that he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. And that translation puts it, he shall see the wounds of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant, that's Jesus Christ, shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So now, this is the theological word I was about to drop. His death was a vicarious death. Vicarious means in the place of another. So it wasn't his own. He was dying somebody's death. It's like you owe thousand pounds and I go to the bank to go and pay it. And they say, but what's your account? No, no. My name is David, but I'm paying into Richard's account. Because I'm paying. Okay, they will receive it because to clear off the debt. So that it's not my debt I am paying. It's somebody's debt I am paying. It's not his death. He didn't die his own death. He died our death. He died in our place. Listen, on the cross, he died not because of his sins, but he died for our sins. Don't forget, this is the gospel. He died the cross, he died on the cross for our sins. First Corinthians, you can write this down quickly. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Bible says that God, Christ, uh, Bible says that for I delivered you first of all that which I received, that Christ died for what? Our sins, according to the scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 and verse 15. Second Corinthians chapter 5. For the love of Christ constrained us because we judge this. If one died, what? For all. Did you see that? He didn't die for himself, he died for all. If one died for for all, then all died. Verse, five, verse 15 says that, and he died for all. Do you see that? So he didn't die for himself. He died for all. He paid the price for all of us. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It says that he bore he himself, bore, for he himself bore our sins. It's not his sin. He didn't have sins, but he was on the cross bearing our sins, paying for our sins. He bore our sins in his own body, not an angel's body. He didn't send an angel to do it for us. He could have sent an angel but I said, no, I'm going to come down myself and do it. I'm going to take care of it myself. He did it in his own body. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That's, that's the, on the cross. 
that we having died to our sins might live for him. He died for in First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. He says that for Christ also suffered once for all the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit. He died on the cross for once or for sins, not for his sins, but for our sins. In Hebrew chapter 9, verse 28, it talks about how he will create turn again. This time, not uh, uh, verse 27 says, appointed unto man once to die, and after death, judgment. Then verse 28, verse 28 says, so Christ was offered once, why? To bear to bear what? The sins of many. Not himself. He died to bear. This is important, please. This is him. So when you see Christ on the cross, when you remember Christ on the cross, remember your sin on the cross. When Satan comes to accuse you about your sins, when you are in Christ, show him that he's already paid for on the cross it's already paid for on the cross oh my goodness in Romans chapter 5 Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 it says that we having it says that therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ say I have peace with God so when Satan comes and attacks you and says that you used to be a thief you used to be a criminal you used to be like that all the things you have done you think you have been forgiven you have not been forgiven point him to the cross in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, he says that, For whilst we were yet sinners, uh, God demonstrated his own love towards us in this, that whilst we were yet sinners, what happened? I can't hear you, what happened? What would did Christ die for? Sinner, he didn't die for himself. That's number one. Who was behind his death? God. Bible says that Isaiah chapter 53, again, as I run up, 53, verse 11. Let's look at the verse 12. Verse 12 is very interesting. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great. And watch this. He shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul out uh, unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore this, did you see that? He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the strong. He bore the sin of many. He bore the sin, he bore the sin of many. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. I think I like Galatians 1 4. Galatians 1 4. 1 4 please. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins? Ah. What did he do? So he went to the cross willingly. That's why he won't talk back. He said, Point just probably, go on, kill me. Execute me. Campaign for them. He gave himself for our sins. Now let me finish. I keep saying I'm finishing. I keep saying I'm finished. My time is up. Watch this. When the devil says that your sins have not been paid for, what evidence have you got? In John chapter 20, verse 26 downwards, he appeared to them. After eight days, his disciples were inside again, were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, to, and then, he, 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 Jesus came, being, the doors being shut, and stood their midst, and he said, peace unto you. And then he turns to Thomas, verse 27. He goes directly to Thomas, and he said to Thomas, reach out your finger. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Reach out your finger, your finger here, and look in my, in my, in my, and reach out your hand. Here, put it in my side. What about his hands and his side? Because he's the same Jesus who was crucified. But after resurrection, won't the wounds heal? Supernatural body. What do you need wounds there for? No. He's always like this. Jesus is always like this. I paid. Redemption. Redeem Redemption accomplished. Redemption accomplished. Redemption accomplished. Redemption accomplished. The signs. Listen, they bruised him. That's why I said the Bible said he was bruised. Yes. The wounds are necessary to show the flow of the blood. They bruised his brow by crushing thorns on his head. 
They bruised his hands with the nails. They bruised his side his, with the sword. They bruised his back with the whips. They bruised his face with the blows from the Roman soldiers. He was bruised all over. And the bruise is a permanent sign. Oh, Revelation chapter 1. I read it, didn't you see? Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10. And we ran up. I feel like preaching. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he is coming with the cloud. And every eye will see him. And even those who... Even those who... The piercing is necessary for our redemption. The piercing is necessary for our justification. The piercing is necessary for our redemption, our freedom. He was pierced. Those who pierced him. Didn't we see in the reading in John chapter 19, verse 34, the soldier took a sword and pierced his side. That's why I told Peter, and so I told Thomas, put your hand there. The wound is just there. The wound is not going. Why? Because it's the evidence of the blood I paid, the price I paid for redemption. I have accomplished redemption. Zechariah chapter 12, verse, verse 10. Chapter 12, verse 10. I need to run up now. Chapter 12, verse 10. It says that, and I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication then they will look on me whom they pierced the piercing of Christ is the evidence of redemption accomplished redemption accomplished Redemption, because redemption has been accomplished, that means you have been bought. Anyone who is in Christ, who comes to Christ, has been bought from the slave market of sin. The price paid. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am the child. He who the Son sets free. the meaning of Christianity. God must remain righteous so he will punish sin. But the sin that was supposed to come to us, the punishment that was supposed to come to us, Bible says that we all as sheep have gone astray and God has laid the iniquity, the chastisement, the punishment for iniquity upon him. The Lord, we have gone astray, and the Lord has laid on him the, uh, all of us our iniquity. Verse 3, it says, for the chastisement of, for our peace. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, and we did hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we did, uh, we, we did not esteem. Verse 4, let's quickly go to verse 4. Surely he, oh, oh, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem, uh, we, we esteem him stricken, smitten of God and by God and afflicted. Verse, the verse 5 is the one, the key one. He said, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed. Somebody shout hallelujah! Oh, come on, come on. I thought I heard you shouting hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Oh, lift 
his name. Lift his name. Lift his name. Lift his name. Everybody, wherever you are, lift his name. Let's lift his name. Lift his name. Lift his name. Somebody shout hallelujah, 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 halleluj
Sí o sí. just getting ready to leave. Wherever you are, you might be watching online, you might be watching in the, uh, the viewing centers, you might be in the overflow. This is the day that must mark the beginning and the turning point in your life. And you want to say, you know you don't have peace with God. I mean, this is crucial, critical. You know you don't have peace with God. When you don't have peace with God, you know it. You know you don't have peace with God and you want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. Pray with me. I want to have peace with God. I want to be in Christ. I want to be found in Him. The songwriter says that trust in His righteousness alone. Faultless stand before His throne. I don't want to be found in my own righteousness. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, he says that, that I might be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Sometimes you might have done a lot of different things, good or bad, but you know you don't have peace with God. This is the day. After such a message, why do you carry your sins when you can leave it at the cross? Why do you keep yourself on the sl slave market of sin? When price has been paid, redemption has been accomplished to bring you out. This is not about religion or church. It's not about church, church. I, I've been in church. This is my first time in church. I've always been in church. It's not about that. Listen, when you don't have peace with God, you know it. When you don't have peace with God, you know it. But God doesn't want to use your sins against you. Christ on the cross, the Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. That means that we were, we were estranged. We were estranged from God. You are here, or you are listening. You are in the viewing centers, or you are in the overflow, or wherever you are in your house. And you know, you know, you know that you don't have peace with God. You need Jesus. This is the moment. The cross has paid it all. But it can never be applicable to you until you willingly embrace it. 
and you are here, you want to say, Pastor, I need a new start in Christ. I want to have peace with Jesus. I want to have peace with Jesus. I want to encourage you wherever you are. If that is your genuine desire, you want to have peace with Jesus, lift up your right hand above your head, wherever you are, so I can pray with you. Say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to have peace with God. I want to be found in Jesus. I want the cross to wash my sins. Lift up your right hand wherever you are. So I can, God bless you. I can see the hands. God bless you wherever you are. In the overflow, in the viewing centers, wherever you are. Wherever you are. Do it. Do it. You want to have peace with God. Your, what, when your sins are not forgiven, what you got to do? And the only way our sins can be forgiven is in Christ. And it cannot be forgiven in Christ until you come to Christ and say, God, forgive me. Jesus, I'm ready to start a new life in you. I'm ready to embrace you as my Lord. And that must be done before your sins can be given, forgiven. You say, I want to repent and I want to be found in Christ. Lift up your right hand so I can pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Lift it up. God bless you. God bless you. Wherever you are, in the overflow, there are people there. God bless you. Uh, and then in the, in fact, I can't see people on the screen. I can see, you can see me. So this is what we want to do to help. Can you rise to your feet if your hand is lifted? Can you just rise to your feet wherever you are? Can you rise to your feet? God bless you. God bless you. Rise to your feet. In the overflow, rise to your feet. In the viewing centers, let's clap for them as they rise to their feet. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. God bless you. Rise to your feet. God bless you. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them in the overflow. In the viewing centers, why don't you rise to your feet wherever you are? Rise to your feet. It's a new day for you. God wants to have a, start afresh with you. He crushed Christ so you don't, you don't have to be crushed. He crushed Christ. If you die right now, you don't know where you are going. You are in trouble. You got to make peace with Christ. You got to make peace with God. Bible says that therefore we have peace with God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Having been justified by the blood of Christ, we have peace with God. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. You want peace with God. Join us, rise to your feet wherever you are. It's time for us to close. But I don't need you, to, I don't want you to miss this. Miss this. God bless you. Uh, those on your feet, I think, why don't you come to the front, if you don't mind, wherever you are in the overflow. Just come. Let's come for the come, come to me. Come, come, come. Wait, 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 wait. I want you, if you came with someone, just walk them. Come with them and stand with them. Just come, come. Come with them, come with them. Those sitting around, people who, wait, 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 wait. Those people sitting around, people who, who rose up, come with them, come with them. Don't let them come alone, walk with them. I, I want you to walk with them and come with them. Come with somebody, make sure you are coming with somebody sitting, whether you, you know him or you know her, say, let's go, I want to go with you. Accompany them and walk with them, come, come, come. Walk with somebody, let's clap for them. God bless you, God bless you. Let's clap for them, let's clap for them. Come on, come on, come on, let's clap for them. Come, come and stand with them. Come and, oh, come on, let's clap for them. God bless you. God bless you. Come and stand with them, come and stand with them. God bless you. Wherever you are, in the overflows, People are still sitting there. I, I, my spirit can tell. You are still sitting there. In the viewing centers. I mean, you are still sitting there. Why don't you just get up? Get up, be bold enough. Do it. Yes, just do it. This is the best opportunity for you. Just do it. Come to the front. Wherever you are. Rise up and come. Come and make peace with God. Come and make peace with God. Where you are still sitting there. You know something is telling you. Get up and come. Why don't you get up? Come. Get up, let's clap for them as they do that. In the viewing centers, let's clap for them. Get up and come. Get up and come. Come. God bless you. 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 All right. I'm happy for you. Congratulations, those, those in front, both here and in the viewing centers. And those who are watching privately in your house, in your homes, and you want to do it. There's someone, interestingly, there's somebody watching me right now, and you are a, you are a member of the royal, fa a, a royal family. You are a member of a royal family, and you need God desperately, and you are listening to me, and you're ready to do it. Join us as we do it, right? Join us, because God has seen you already, and God has a plan for you. 
I want all those of you in front, I want to pray a simple prayer with you. I would need you to say it after me, but make it your own prayer and mean it from your heart. Is that okay? So you say it after me, mean it from your heart and make it your own prayer, and it changes everything. Let's pray. If you don't mind, you can lift up your two hands as a sign of surrendrance, if you don't mind. And say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Let's all say it out loud. Say, Lord Jesus. Jesus. I know I am a sinner, and I've sinned against God. But I believe you are the Son of God. You died on the cross to save me from my sins. From today, I repent from my sins. I believe in your work on the cross. That that is the means to my salvation. And I embrace the message. And I make a commitment that I will live for you. I will serve you. I will be in church. To your glory by the help of the Holy Spirit so please come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior thank you for dying in my place so I can live in your place in Jesus name amen father I thank you for all these precious friends I pray your grace upon them they will grow from glory to glory and they will, they will make a difference in the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now. 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 Oh, all those, all, all you lovely people in front, I'm so happy for you. Uh, the, you've, you've given good meaning to Easter for me. That's what Easter means. Someone sins forgiven. Doesn't matter. The devil is very upset. How, how can God forgive him for what he has done? How can God? God said, Tough. <laughs> it's paid. You're free. And we want to help you in your work with Christ, in your growth in the Lord. So we have stewards who will write your name, share a few information with you that will be helpful in your development in God. And then afterwards, just about three minutes, then you join us as we get ready to close. Is that okay? So the, the stewards will have a, a chat with you write your name so we can pray for you and all those in the viewing centers there are still us everywhere we want to help you because we are one big family we want to help you we are the children of God we are the body of Christ we want to help you to grow to be so strong that God will use you for his glory amen you 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 are the best candidate God wants to use amen so um, there's a gentleman standing behind you and in the viewing centers there's someone his, their hands are lifted. Please look at him. You can follow him. He'll take you to the place and then uh, you'll come join. Please follow him. Let's clap for them. Please follow him. Yeah, please follow. Follow, follow, follow. joining us online in your homes you made their commitments please there will be an information on the screen uh, follow that information and let's hook up with you so we can help you we want to link up with you so we can help you <laughs> forgive me after saying it I was wondering what does that even actually mean so <laughs> I, I'm just trying to sound American it just came into my mind <laughs> we want to connect with you that's the right word we want to connect with you and help you. So there will be an information on the screen. Send us an email, link up with us, and it's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be a glorious day. I thought you were clapping for Jesus. We hope you are blessed by today's message. It is the will of God that we all come to accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and come into the new life in Christ. If you have just said the sinner's prayer, please send us an email at amen at charis.org where we can connect with you and help you with your spiritual development. We look forward to speaking with you.
the prompt every no almost every day every day i'm here and i've been here 97 percent of the time so we are about to close but this is easter i think it's good to, to give a sacrifice when we look at the sacrifice he did for us no sacrifice is too much amen we want to give our tithes and our offerings the viewing centers everywhere ushers are standing in the aisle the information is on the screen. You can scan the QR code on the screen and it will take you to our giving page. On the other hand, um, if you're also watching online, there'll be an information on the screen. Don't leave us. We want to finish, or let's all finish together. There's, an info, there's information on the screen. Please, let's do that quickly. And let's take, if you want to give physical cash, you can indicate by raising your hands and the ashes will serve you with an envelope so you can give else you can scan the QR code on the screen or the ashes have, the stewards have got a printed out QR, QR code. You can scan it. It takes you to the giving page. And then let's all do it together. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray over our tithes and our offerings. Don't be a believer who is a non-tither. Serve God. Jesus. Faithfully. The Bible says that honor the Lord with all thy uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of your increase. Honor God. Honor God. Honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruits of your increase. Your tithe and your giving is a necessary aspect and expression of your faith and worship. Let's pray over our offerings. Father, Thank you so much for the privilege to give. Bless every seed sown. Bless every tithe given. Let the tithe and the seeds be used as a point of reference. We heard so many testimonies as people's giving, how people's giving has made way for a better living. As we give, let our giving be acceptable to you. We bless every seed, every offering, every tithe in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, please let's go ahead and do that. The Son of God is glorified. Enjoyed today's. Yeah. This is a really good Friday. Yes. But the good news is tomorrow we are back here in London. All those in the viewing centers, it doesn't apply to you. It's only here in London. So, London tomorrow, 4 p.m., upper room experience continues. Tomorrow is day number 83. So, tomorrow, upper room experience, 4 p.m. in this particular venue make sure you come and tomorrow i'll get to lay hands and i pray i'll be able i will i'll teach on what to do to sustain personal revival Amen. so that after this season you don't backslide or you don't dip or you don't leak amen well it's time for us to close please let's celebrate all uh viewing centers and all those who god bless you we love you Stay on. We are not leaving. We are all closing together. Amen. Tomorrow we are back. And on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, there will be church service everywhere in the branches.
and in London we'll be at Kensington Town Hall and I will be teaching on the resurrection amen so Sunday in the morning on all the, the branches we'll have our service resurrection service but in London it will be at Kensington Town Hall invite a friend and you yourself make sure you don't come late be there we're going to have a glorious time until then I'll see you tomorrow God willing shall we rise to close do you, do, you, do you want to show your gratitude and say thank you by lifting your hands and let's give him thanks Father we give you thanks we give you thanks we give you thanks for all you have done we give you thanks, O Lord. We give you thanks, O Lord. You deserve it all from our hearts. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord. Our creator the heavens and the earth unto Jesus Christ our Savior unto the Holy Spirit our teacher we ascribe all honor all praise dominion power majesty glory thanksgiving wisdom even now and forevermore may the Lord bless you and keep you may he lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. may he cause his face to shine on you and give you peace may he deliver you from shame deliver you from falling deliver you from any form of atrocities your food is blessed your drink is blessed your going out is blessed your coming in is blessed you are blessed on the highways the byways the airways the motorways the railways and the high seas be blessed may this Easter be your turnaround moment for major glorious testimonies in your life. I stand here as a prophet and an apostle over this commission and I declare you are blessed. With an apostolic audacity, I decree that no evil comes near you. There shall be no evil occurrence around you. You shall see the goodness of God. You shall move from grace to grace. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Go from this place with this assurance that in Christ Jesus, you are more than a conqueror. And everyone believes, shall amen. amen. And now, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. To our year of revival. Year of revival. For whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you got anything to say? What have you got to say? So shall it be for you. God bless you. I love you all. And remember, redemption has been accomplished. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Those of you who can make it. I love you. Jenny Mess is back. I love you all. Bye. God bless you. We hope you were blessed by today's message. It is the will of God that we all come to accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and come into the new life in Christ. If you have just said the sinner's prayer, please send us an email at amen at charis.org where we can connect with you and help you with your spiritual development. We look forward to speaking with you. Giving Made Easy, the fastest and easiest way to give. Simply visit the giving page on charis.org. You can give via Apple Pay, Google Pay or PayPal. 
You can also give via bank transfer or text giving. Text giving is only available with a UK phone number. International givers can give using the SwiftBig or IBAN digits provided. May God bless you as you give. The Caris Church app is finally here and houses everything you need in one place. You can watch and listen to messages, view upcoming events, receive upcoming church updates in your notifications, give and connect with us. The way we listen to messages has had a makeover. Simply click on the message icon and click the Create Playlist icon to create your own playlist. You can also view the daily Bible readings and access the daily prayers on the go. Search Caris Church in the App Store or Play Store to download the app and start enjoying the benefits. Thank you for watching.